Out Kung Fu Sun podcast. I am here with my partner, obviously, Melissa Yamaguchi, you can see. Uh, and my... You look great today, Melissa, by the way. Thank you so much, by the way. I like your hair. Oh, thank you. It's the Veronica yeah. Lake look. Yeah, it's very is that, good. Is that a Billy Yamaguchi special? <laughs> well, he, he's, he waves a wand when he gets a moment. I like it. Anyway, you may be wondering who this fellow is that is talking next to me. This fellow, I know, I'm, I always spit. Leave me alone. Um, is Bobby Williams. He's my significant other, otherwise sort of husband for a long time. Boyfriend. Uh, no, boyfriend. At 100, we get to be boyfriend and girlfriend. It doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> anyway, we'll discuss those issues at another time. I, I don't, I'm Until then, point. he's significant, that's for sure. He's You're significant. Anyway, so Bobby hasn't been on the show yet, and I've, I'm so excited because you really are one of my favorite people in the world, aside from Melissa. Melissa's my other favorite person. You're my favorite male. She's my favorite female. Yay, Gosh. my two best friends. <laughs> anyway, so today, this beautiful day in April, we we're talking about mental health. And... I have to tell everyone who's listening, Bobby knows more about body brain connection than probably anybody that I've ever met, experts, doctors, PhDs, whatever. Bobby, you really are incredibly well versed on what it what it means to have the body and brain in sync. And like kind of tell us your perspective on really finding brain balance and what that entails for you. And I know that's a very long answer, but maybe you could be a little bit concise and then we'll, we'll dig in deeper. Because it has a lot to do with the, something that I've talked about on the show, The Seven Doctors, which actually I have to give credit to Bobby because he came up with that. One time, I think we were interviewing, it was like, yeah, The Seven Doctors. And it was like, bam, 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 bam. It was like 10, 10, 10 years ago, longer. Yeah, yeah, it was incredible. Anyway. So tell us kind of your perspective on how physic physicality, you know, and all that entails really affects the brain. Well, there've been so many scientific studies done about um, exercise in the brain um, and how working out actually makes you smarter and feeds nutrients to the brain. And it, 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 there's a whole host of things that, um, what is it? Happy hormones. You get happy horn hormones in your your endocrine system, and and there's so many there's so many different things that your body makes. It makes its own pharmacology, right? And and the, so the exercise allots your brain to uh, expand, become smarter, um, become quicker. Um, more happens when you exercise than pretty much anything else that you can do. Your muscles release all of these different things. So the more muscle you have, in a sense, uh, the more of these endorphins and these bits of dopamine and all these great things sort of cascade down and makes you feel amazing. We all feel exhilarated when we work out or go for a brisk walk or go for a run or, you know, things. So many people today are doing cold plunges. I mean, think about what that does to you. You know, you're half asleep and you you jump in an ice bath and it doesn't necessarily have to be 32 degrees, um, scientifically proven up to 52 still works. It gives you the same benefits. You need to stay in longer. We have a friend, uh, my buddy, Mark, an old roommate, a uh, rugby player, Meryl and I were doing cold plunges up in Sun Valley and the water is freezing, right? It's moving. So there's no ice when it's moving, there's no ice, but it's still, in, you know, in the thirties. And uh, Mark, his muscles would lock up. And he's like, I can't do it this cold. And so he started at a warmer temperature and worked his way down. Now he can do the cold, but he likes it at like 48 to 50 degrees. Um, it, it's, it's just- well, And you get the benefit, and the benefits are dopamine, right? It, it accelerates dopamine. What are the other benefits as far as chemistry? Endorphins. Endorphins. Endorphins, dopamine. Yeah. Uh, one of my buddies, this is kind of an interesting thing, uh, uh, you know, sidetrack. He's a psychotherapist, right? Prescribing what's big now, mushrooms, you know, these types of things. He tries to stay away from synthetic medications. You guys will love this. Uh, his new prescription is, depending on what part of town you live in, 
he finds you a jujitsu school, right? So he has people come in who are depressed and they have all these things going on. And he's like, well, you know, if they're physically okay and, you know, hearts are good, everything's good. He sends him to six, six days jujitsu over two weeks. They all come back in with smiles on their face. They're all happy because they had physical contact. Um, they worked out. Uh, they did something new. So their brains had to, you know, develop a, a new sort of sport or a new way of moving. And, but the connection is the biggest thing. People, yeah. people touching and connecting is huge. We all know about the babies in the hospital back in, I think, the 30s that were left unattended. And mm -hmm. they thought they were giving them the best food, the, you know, the best water, the best this, the best that. And, but nobody was touching the babies. And they, they died. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So one of the things on this mental health that Meryl talks about, teenage suicide is through the roof. So I believe, um, you know, speaking amongst the four of us, back in the 60s and 70s, the teenage epidemic was teenage pregnancy. And we couldn't get enough of each other, you know? Love, 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 all that stuff, you know, it was fantastic, right? You couldn't wait to kiss your first girlfriend and you had a wingman that was getting you a date so you can go to the movies and all these amazing things. Well, the kids still have this today, but they don't do it. You know what they do? They go like this. They text on the phone. 57%, 57% of a human connection is eye contact, head movement, hand movement when we're talking with each other. 36 is the tone of our voices and 7% is the content. So these kids that text have a 7% human connection. Well, of course you wanna kill yourself. The babies died when they weren't connected. You were going through the same thing. Doesn't matter the age. You can't handle being alone all the time, not seen, not heard, not felt, not listened to. I, I wrestled, so I'm pretty, pretty much a touchy-feely guy, right? My space is, is pretty much this. I like this. I'm very comfortable here. Um, but most people don't have that. Like if you walk up to somebody, a lot of people need that like three or four feet of space and you get into their space and it's like, whoa, you know, that's uncomfortable for me. But at the end of the day, once people start connecting and touching and feeling and that kind of stuff, everybody gets better. I think that if we got rid of the cell phones, you know, how everybody says, hey, stop using the cell phone for two weeks or this amount of time. It doesn't matter the length of time you do it. If you're addicted to it and on it all the time, you do it for a couple hours, you feel different. Mm -hmm. um, one of my buddies probably 10 years ago said, how much social media are you doing? And I was like, I don't know, maybe two hours a day. He goes, that's what you think. And I, I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, say you see something and you don't like it. Do you pass it on to somebody else? I'm like, yeah. And you talk about it. He goes, well, you're adding more time there. He goes, how many things do you take down and then look up and so it, it turned out to be more like four hours a day with the two hours of looking. He said, stop it all together for a week and tell me how you feel. Within 24 hours, I felt different. Then I stopped carrying my phone on hikes. I don't need anybody to count my steps. I know how far I'm walking. I'm pretty smart, right? You can figure it out. So you figure your distance and you come back. Um, same thing in the car. I had a bunch of nieces and nephews that I would drive around in the car. Nobody's allowed to use their phone. It goes into the glove box or into the center console. We listen to music, laugh, and tell stories and have a great time. So like, this is all about the reconditioning what's old is new, you know, getting back to that. I mean, this is just how I feel about this stuff. And the physical is huge for me. Every day, Meryl and I go out and play. We, we're here now in California. We go for long walks on the beach with the dogs. We're in the water, in and out of the water while we walk. We come back. We decide whether or not we're going to ride bikes. I mean, we get up before sunrise to do this. We watch sunrises. That's another huge one. Uh, Andrew Huberman constantly talking about getting sunlight in your eyes. If you get sunlight in your eyes first thing, it pushes the cortisol levels out, right? And if you don't, the cortisol levels will start coming with you throughout the day, you know, and I'm doing this because as the sun sets, you're still going to have the cortisol. You're going to stay up later and you are going to be depressed. Every human is the same. Uh, Food is, you know, another one. I mean, I could talk all day long about yes, this. I want you to, Bobby, time out. I want you to kind of, for our audience, a lot of our listeners tap in and are looking to learn. They just, they want to know what they don't know. And you're giving a, a wealth of information. I want you on this, on before you talk about food, because you've got very, I've learned so much from you when it comes to food. You've got very succinct, really 
clear tips on on eating on on how the body needs to eat like should someone go completely no carb and if they're going to have carb what kind of carb and should they have fat in their diet there's so much information i want to share one last thing before you go because i want you to talk about this there for years doctors there, there's been a group of doctors who said yeah um alcohol is not good for you then there was a whole group of doctors that said a little bit of alcohol is not bad for you a glass of red wine every once in a while isn't going to hurt you as a matter of fact studies show blah 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 well, just recently with this week, within this week, the reports came flooding out from a group of scientists saying, actually, moderate drinking is not even good for you. What it does to the brain, and they've been showing, and all the brain doctors are like, we've been saying this for years. So I want, there's so much conflicting information out there. If you can hand off a handful of, look, just remember, at least remember this, because people get so overwhelmed by all the information. If you can give hardcore basics that you've taught me and my family i think our yeah. audience would love it yeah well, well you know at the end of the day okay it's really simple it's very black and white alcohol is poison so a little poison isn't good for you there's no upside okay. to alcohol zero just yeah. just because it's common doesn't mean it's normal and you know from the things that i've read on if you want to get into ethereal it was called spirits back about 600 arabic right they called it spirits because when you drink as much as you drink in these places, call them pubs and stuff. I grew up in these places. I mean, we grew up with a lot of alcohol and where I come from, it's alcohol fighting, you know, and, and, and it's nonstop and it still goes on today. Um, they call it spirits because supposedly your soul untethers from your body, still connected, but leaves and has this little tether connected and other spirits come into you that want to have sex and fight go with the lowest part of the brain and that's the drive and nothing else. And that's why there's like these people who want to fight. Supposedly these spirits are coming in. This is like an old ancient belief. Um, it, it kind of makes sense though. When it's you pretty think trippy. About it, a lot of people really will go to a, you know, you say a, a happy drunk or a, or a mean drunk. It's like so, so certain people, you can sort of see it, right? They, they drink and they become angry or, you know, volatile or something. It's, it's yeah, I just think of me in college, and I was like the karaoke queen when I'd have a couple of drinks. <laughs> you were the happy. Girl. I was happy, <laughs> singing and happy. Yeah, it's it's not a good it's it's not a good thing. Uh, you know, all my, my buddies still all my buddies still drink. I lost uh, seven friends from thirteen to nineteen. They're gone, all alcohol related. <laughs> So alcohol in my lifestyle is, you know, I, I was done at 18. I remember I drank the last time, my 18th birthday. It was either 18th or 19th. I never drank again. I was, I was done. Uh, two of my friends, you know, thought it would be funny to get drunk and drive through as many li traffic lights as they could to see if they can get down this road called Nichols Road. One was decapitated. The other one lost part of his head. He lasted a hey. couple of days in the hospital. He was gone. They were 18 and 19 years old. Okay, so, and my sister, my sister's boyfriend, you can get in bars at 16 when I was a kid because the drinking age was 18. So my sister's boyfriend, uh, you know, there was a scrap outside or something. He was saying something to one of the bouncers and the guy waited for him not to be looking. The guy punched him on the side of the head, hit his head on the bumper of a car. He was gone. Another kid lived two blocks, uh, two, uh, two doors down across the block. Uh, they flipped a car over, broke his neck. He's gone. Uh, one of my buddies that I was in a health class and gym class with, he was a year younger than me, um, out drinking. We got in a bunch of fights in a bar. People got thrown out. Bouncer said, you can come in. You can't come in. Whatever. Somebody said he was looking for me. He was out in the parking lot, said somebody was outside with a gun. I went outside. He had three in the stomach, one in the hand. Some off-duty cop who was drunk uh, took his revolver out, you know, in regular clothes and, you know, unloaded it on my buddy because uh, he panicked. My buddy threw him on the ground. I mean, this stuff, I looked at this and I was like, I'm done. I'm not doing this yeah. anymore. So you gave up drinking at 19. At 19, but yeah. There's, there's, there's no upside to it. Let, 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 let's get away from the alcohol. All I can say to you is don't do it. There's no reason for it. If you want to get resveratrol, because I get that, I'm like, drink grape juice. You'll be fine. You don't need the alcohol. In there. <laughs> um, um, but the, the food is a very funny thing. Everybody wakes up in the morning and they tighten their bodies up and stretch, squeeze their legs. Um, it's the instant you do that, your body's making enough glycogen coming out of your liver for two hours for you to go and hunter and hunt and gather for your food. You don't need to eat. There's no breaking a fast when you wake up. You need to go move. 
when you're done moving and the glycogen runs out, it's time to eat. That's when you break the fast. So, so I want to break that down because that's yeah. super interesting. So, so basically, you're saying Your like that when you wake up, you know how you do that thing. You're like oh, and I every morning. You know, your whole body you like stretch it. That actually releases glycogen, which enables you to continue to or or, or to go start. hunt to go hunt That's again. Hunt. Go get yeah, food. Start not, working out, not working out, but you start moving. Yeah, right? we, we okay. replace that. We don't need to hunt together because yeah. we have air one four tenths of miles away. Best food in the world. But, you know, we go out and we go for a hike. and We go do gymnastics at the beach and we go for a hike in the mountains if we're in Idaho. You know, that's our hunting and gathering, so to speak, you know. And then our digestive systems and our systems are, are, are ready, you know, yeah. to take food in. And as far as food goes... Meryl and I have been playing around with different foods for a long time. I, I started eating raw food, but real raw food. When I say real raw food, raw everything. Raw meat, raw vegetables, raw milk, raw butter, raw honey, raw eggs. You know, I, I started eating everything in its pure raw form. I do extremely, extremely well on raw meat. I'm an old blood type. Um, I'm very active. I have a super, super high, high metabolism. And a very, I'm a slow oxidizer, so I, I, I don't. What does get, that mean? I don't get the nutrition <laughs> that somebody would get who can take in the nutrients. So I burn through my food, and I'm not getting enough nutrients, so I can eat more. My record in one night, I lost ten and a half pounds sleeping, and it wasn't because I got up and went to the bathroom. My, my metabolism races He's that much. He's the envy of every woman on planet Earth. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, you know, as, as a kid, I would have a sandwich and a glass of milk. We'd go out, I'd have two entrees and come home and have a sandwich and a glass of milk. That's how I ate. And I'm still eating like that today. Still yeah, I was going to yeah. say, I, I ate kind of crazy when I was a kid too, but you're still doing that stuff. So yeah, what, and, and, but, and a big reason is I have a lot of muscle and super dense bones and great nerves and all this stuff, and it's all from the working out. That's a really important point and, and something that we need to address because I think it's so critical. And I've, I've been learning this, you know, from you. I, I know you've been, and don't say I've been telling you this for years because you have. But weight training is amazing because building muscle and having muscle mass actually enhances your metabolism, enhances yeah. your brain, your brain balance, your ability, your hormone balance. It's really quite extraordinary because I've just really in the last, what, three months started really kind of lifting and trying to lift heavier with your help. Um, and it really has an extraordinary effect on the brain. It's, it's good for so many things. Again, uh, people are like, the largest organ in the body is your skin. No, it's not. It's your muscle. And that, that muscle makes the happy hormones and does all these amazing things. So utilizing them, growing them, making more dense and, and getting more stability everywhere is just immense. I was on a DEX machine about uh, a year ago. You know, uh, I think I just turned uh, uh, 58, um, 59 out 60 in September. And um, a 29-year-old male in his prime uh, 7.5 or above is considered high bone density. I'm 60 years old and I'm a 10.8. I have super, super dense bones and it's all from Are weight. You bragging right now? Yeah. Yeah. I'm patting myself. It's all from, it's, it's all, it's all from weight training and heavy weight. I have and, a, and you've I, been weight training for years. Started when I was seven. I talked to a guy yesterday who was in the gym. He was, he was six, nine, uh, about 350 pounds, big dude. And I said, how long have you been working out? And he said, 16 years. And I, I looked at him and said, oh, he goes, what about you? And I, I was like, 53 years. He's like, well, how, how old are you? And I was like, I'm 60. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. He's like, 60. I got to keep working out. I hope when I'm 60, I get, you know, it was really cool. Um, but yeah, I've never stopped working out. And, and, and this is why my bones have to be as dense as they are. I mean, I do have genetics. I'm, you know, my grandfather genetics. was a professional fighter. I, I, I have a lot of good stuff. But I enhance these things. You do, and you stay on top of it. And I, uh, when we're going to take a quick break, we've got just a few minutes out, and then we'll come back in. I want you to come back, and you know, there, there's a lot of people. I mean, you, you and Mary Ellen, your workout and your dedication to your health is phenomenal. It really is. It's very extraordinary. So I, my, my hope is that our audience can glean 
some some starting points from you because you 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 need that, really you know you need to do Melissa, you, need, you need to hold up the uh, cue cards talk about this talk about this talk about <laughs> otherwise i'll just keep jumping around i have so I know, much I, I, i've been sending you, i've been sending you. checks to mary i don't think you guys are getting them but i and well, we, oh, have oh, we oh, taken oh, a break have we taken a break a two minute break we'll be right back <laughs> Welcome back to Outcomes the Sun podcast. Mariel Hemingway and I are here today with Bobby Williams, the extraordinary man who knows everything about just everything. And today what he's going to be sharing with us, what he has been sharing, if you're just tuning in, is all of his, he's got an incredible wealth of knowledge when it comes to physical well-being, mental well-being, emotional, spiritual. Bobby's really pretty extraordinary. And I've learned a lot from him. My family has really benefited from his knowledge and he right before the break was sharing with us about the importance of working out and what it means for the, for your mental well-being. And he's getting ready to share with us some of his incredible tips on nutrition. Bobby. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so did, have you guys mentioned the, the curriculum that we put together, the seven doctors? Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, we, we have, uh, Mary, uh, Mary, Mary gave, gave a class on it. Seven doctors. Mary so did a whole class on it. And on that. Yeah. Sorry. Do you want me to stick, stick with nutrition on this or where, where do you want me to go? I really want, what I'm hoping, Bobby, more than anything is that our audience can go, oh, they're taking notes. Like this guy said, stay away from margarine or whatever. You're, you've got some really good, let's imagine that I am middle America and I want to start. I want to work on my mental health and I've heard it has something to do with, that my food might help. What can you tell me? What should I start with? More greens, yeah. uh, proper uh, organic protein? Like what do I need to know? What do you That's what I want you to share. And what should you go towards? Okay, so so uh, uh, again, I guess we we've been talking about you know food. Sugar is the devil at the end of the day. Yeah. You know what I think is amazing, and you know if we if we would get together with you, Melissa, and have all this stuff and line it up, it'd be really, we can get so much more accomplished, more organized. But it's fun to jump around. I'll come back on. We have a Life magazine somewhere from 1969 where it's an ad from the American Medical Association. Uh, five tablespoons of sugar a day will help you lose weight and give you the pep and the step that you need and the energy to get throughout the day. Yeah, okay. It, it's the same thing as saying women should smoke when they're pregnant, right? <laughs> These yeah. things keep going on and on and on. The amount of inflammation that comes into the brain and the body from sugar is astronomical. It's beyond anything you know. And then they, they, they make these other sugar molecules, the stevia and the and splitting the atom. And the, you, you're just like, what, what, what are you doing? Like, what, how right. is this happening? Carbohydrates, you know, uh, it, it turns into sugar. People think that, oh, I'm eating oatmeal. Well, if you're eating steel cut oats, you'll get a neutral, you'll get a neutral sugar spike there where it won't be so bad. But you eat the oatmeal, you might as well just do the tablespoons of sugar because it's the same thing. They don't know that that broken down a uh, uh, little bit of, of, of the steel cut oats and slightly cooked, so you put it in, put hot water on it, it's sugar again. Like everything, it's everywhere. And, and, yeah, and so- yeah, Bobby, what you just said is important. That's really important because I know for a fact, there's a lot of young moms that are getting those Quaker instant oats, cracking them open, putting boiling water over and giving it to their kids on the way to school. And you're right, it's just a cup of sugar before the baby gets to school. Yeah, I, yeah. And, and they needed to make the steel cut oats. You know why they don't make the steel cut oats? Because it takes 20 minutes. I don't want to take the time to cook. It's taking the time to cook and make things and, and preparing things is it extends your life beyond. And it also is, is it keeps you, uh, uh, you know, from, from getting sick. It's like, people are like, well, organic food and biodynamic food and all these things and your raw milk, they all cost money. It costs a lot more to get sick. Spend the money on the food. It's preventative. It's healthcare. And spend the time. And to spend the time. I mean, yeah. and while spending the time, converse, talk, sit down, speak about the day, speak about the morning, speak about, speak, you know, and, 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 and back to the food. So, so I have something called uh, metabolic flexibility. I can eat a carbohydrate, a fat, and a protein. I can have a predominantly carbohydrate meal and the glycogen will break down and I don't get these big spikes, I can function off of that. But I can also switch the next day and just have fat and protein and work off of the fat and protein. My brain definitely works better. You wanna have that metabolic flexibility so that you can go back and forth. And the way to do this 
it usually takes, a, 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 I guess, about a week for somebody to just be on fat and protein and not eat the carbohydrates and, and any of the sugars, right? Stay away from that stuff. It, yeah. it's, it's a little tough to get through because you, you, you crave, your body's like so used well, because to because it's, it's sugar and it's yeah, addiction. It, yeah. It's addictive. Yeah. yeah. It wants the glucose. It wants the glucose. Yeah. It wants the glucose, you know, but it will shift. It will shift and everybody's different. It will shift. And then you can run off of fat and it runs equally as good, but it's actually better for the brain because the brain loves fat better than it does the glucose, believe it or not. It actually loves fat more than even protein. I mean, the brain, brain cells are developed by fat. What babies, you know, babies, it's, it's known that they're, they're, you know, their brain cells and their brain. <laughs> like I said, the brain likes the fat more than it does the glucose. I mean, I mean, these are some of the scientific studies. Um, the other thing is, I believe that because, so I'll give, give you a great analogy on raw fat. And, I, and I'll give you some raw fats to eat, like, you know, the butter, the avocados. Um, if you're going to eat nuts, you want to you want to sprout them. You want to soak them and sprout them. They're 300 times more utilizable to your body. Everything has a protein inhibitor or some sort of protectant on it. People who become vegetarians, uh, they're, they're like, oh, you know, all, I eat kale, I eat this. There's so much poison on these things to protect themselves. That's what if you eat like kale and you didn't massage it and do all these things or somehow cook it. You get bloated and you get gas from it because it's got poison on it to protect itself. Everything tries to protect itself. Um, whereas the meat is is dead and it's broken down. So, so it, it, for me anyway, I'm an old blood type and I'm fast metabolizing all this stuff. I eat a lot of meat. I don't do well on just veggies. I've tried veggies and nuts and seeds and 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 and, and different things that and I, it just doesn't work. And Wait, with my, yeah. To be fair, you're moderate with those things. Like you do do those things, but oh yeah, I know. You know, the primary thing is, I mean, when it comes right down to it, you, uh, uh, my understanding of your belief is that eat real food, right? Eat no processed food. Get get so you you have metabolic flexibility, but you have to do that kind of by clearing out the carbohydrates. Yeah, we're gonna get that. Yeah, time. yeah. So yeah. just eat real food. It's called jerk. J E R F. If everybody just eats real food, right? Nothing processed, nothing. You want to start to, yeah, processed and sugar and packaged. And, you know, shopping the outsides of the store, you know, stop going down those aisles where the stuff lasts for 25 years. Everything that lasts a long time is going to shorten your life. There were a group of people back in the 70s that, that they were, if they ate more preservatives and all the things that lasted it longer, they would, they would, it would preserve them. Uh, and, uh, and supposedly after they died, it did. They like they didn't decompose as fast. So, yeah, but they left. Okay. They left us a little earlier. It, it, it's sort of like it's sort of like you're, you're saying. Uh, let me grab the cat. Fast food, uh, you know, speeds up speeds up your 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 time to leave here. You know, it, it's slow cooking things and doing all the things that we're talking about and sitting and down at the table. In the community yeah. of of slow food, of, yeah. of getting together, of cooking for one another, or whatever. Or for your family. So, so Slater, I'm going to say something right now that's really huge for, for, for any guys that are watching the show. Our grandfathers had 10 times or maybe even more the testosterone levels that men have today. Jack Dempsey could fight 27 rounds drinking a bottle of scotch and smoking a pack of cigarettes. You know, everybody talked about how tough Mike Tyson was. He fought, you know, one or two fights in a year. Yeah, there were guys that fought 57 fights in a year. You know, uh, men were so different back in the day. And, and, and so everybody talks about women being sensitive. The most sensitive thing in humans, including men and women, is, is sperm cell count. So plastic knocks down the sperm cell count, in turn knocks down the testosterone levels. We're inundated with plastic. And so, so we have all these low testosterone levels. And what really causes that is the plastic and all the chemicals and all the process and the foods are are, are, are uh, blocking our receptors so that we can't convert our, our free testosterone. Between that, cortisol, EMFs, and all this stuff, it, it's like, how do you win? Like, can how I, do you get it? And I want to interrupt you just explain that what that is for the brain. When you're in balance, when you don't have balance of testosterone, cortisol, and all those different things, that causes depression. That causes low, you know, yep. you don't have energy, you have depression, you have anxiety, all these different things. If you're, 
That's why food is such an important nutrient to create balance in the brain. I just wanted to bring it back to the brain. Go back to the brain. Bring back the seventies when you had all that really good food and you were doing well. What do you want to do? I want to have sex. I want to kiss the pretty girl when I'm a teenager. Right. What do they want to do right. now? Hey, I got no testosterone. It'd be a good day to kill myself today. Today's a good okay, day. Okay, so this is a this. I'm gonna place a phone call to my mom that <laughs> and thanking her for not having me grow up on Long Island where I was around Bobby Williams and his cousins <laughs> running around looking for sex. Thank you, mom. Okay, so what I, I have a question for you. When I'm around you and Marielle, early in the morning, I've been around you guys like early in the morning when we've had events to do, or you guys have been filming and I've been with you. You guys drink an inordinate amount of water. You guys come in with mason jars. When I first met you, I thought they were specimens. I didn't know what was happening. You guys are constantly <laughs> carrying around water. Talk to me about, I recently read that the number one challenge that people face in old age is severe dehydration because they forget yeah. to drink. They're just not drinking enough. Talk about water. And we like to we, we like to call it a drought. Ninety percent of the population inwardly is in a drought, and if you're in a drought, you pick up pathogens. It lowers your immune yeah. system. Nothing's getting flushed out. Nothing, and and, uh, and and so water. We look at some science. We love Emoto. Uh, they talk about water and structure. Um, yeah. Emoto does this study where he takes these, these droplets of water and shows them as perfect looking little snowflake molecules when they have a certain temperature under a microscope. So we're made up of, you know, 70% water or more or lower, depending on the individual babies are close to 90. I think it's, it's super high when, when, when we're younger and the more hydrated you are, you know, that the healthier your tissues are, the more they're slide and glide. And also I'll talk about the fat with that, but the water, Marilyn and I drink structured water. And, and so structured water is, we get distilled, but we have a spinner called Vitalizer Plus that has eight uh, uh, little mineral trays on the bottom and, and, and a magnet that spins it. So it looks like a, a little vortex tornado with, with uh, mm -hmm. bubbles and air you know, and, and oxygen. So it oxygenates it, structures the water because one water molecule can have up to 270 clusters. That would be uh, Nestle's water. You drink a bottle, you gotta go to the bathroom. Why? Because the cluster's 270. Say this is the uh, this is the, the, the little cell. Here comes the cluster of water. Hey, can't get in. Let's drop out through the kidneys and go into the bladder so we can go to the bathroom. Meryl and I drink up to 60 ounces of water the first like Three hours we're up. Nobody goes to the bathroom. Body completely rehydrates. It's unbelievable. We do it every day and we add the perfect salt to it. And that's all the minerals. And it's absolutely amazing. Salt is, 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 is a big one in the water. You have to have the right minerals. So not, a lot of not iodized salt, no, no. vitamin C no, salt, the salt, or no, no. Salt, or no we get Baja, Baja Gold has it's, it's got boron in it. Slater will like it. It'll raise your testosterone levels. It's unbelievable and really great right. magnesium. Like, so, so, so people say, don't drink, do not drink the uh, 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 the <laughs> distilled water because it pulls out organic and non-organic minerals out of your body, and it does. But if you add the minerals to it, it does not. All it does is hydrate you, and yeah. it's so clean because it's vapor and it doesn't have an imprint. What Emotos studied the water when he studied it, he found out that water was one of the most easily imprinted uh, uh, um, things on the planet. So if you're made up of 70% water, how much imprinting can go on you? So when you say negative things, it distorts your cells and starts to break them down. If you lie, if you're not doing things to get better, you're actually, you know, shrinking and the cells are going away and things are distorting. So, you know, everything's expansive. Trees don't wake up in the morning and say, hey, I'm having a bad day. Let's kill off a couple of branches. But people wake up and they, they're, they're, they're like, I don't feel good. I'm depressed. I'm this and that. The more you stay in that negative thing, the more your water structure breaks down in your body. I have a friend, uh, his buddy worked in a funeral home and bombing people. When he would put extra fluid into the body, people's skin filled out. You couldn't tell how old they were. A 90 year old would look 40. It was insane. So, so water structure is huge in all the organs, in the brain, it's vital. It's super important so, to get as much water as you can. We do about a gallon a day each. And, and Wait a so, minute, so the trick to me looking younger is embalming? All right, 
I can involve you. Fit thing going on here. So, <laughs> That's a lot of some of the, anyway, we'll get into that another time. But so get, bringing this back to mental health, again, for those people that are suffering, you know, water's really important, stretching, not eating first thing in the morning, it, it, uh, meta metabolic flexibility, eating good fat, eating real food. Yeah, fat. Just, just eat real food, jerk. Yeah. Um, so, so, all yeah. these yeah, so, things so, so, are important to the brain, to the brain, to the brain. Really quickly on the fat, when she talked about the fat before. Okay, so this is a perfect analogy on cooked fat versus raw fat. Uh, you take a uh, clay pot, you know, when you put it on the wheel and spin it, you put the water on it, and you shape the pot and all that stuff, and yeah. you can, it goes through your fingers. That's raw fat in the body and the tissues. It moves, it slides, it glides, it cleanses, it feeds, right? Then you take that same clay pot, put it in the kiln, cook it, get it, get, get, break, take it out, let it cure. It's, it's hard. Take that and smash it on the ground. The shards of that pot are what get into your arteries and the tissues in your body. So it's like if you ate it, the little shards get stuck. It's cooked fat. So let so yeah. let me explain. Like deep fried food, that kind of fat gets into the arteries and creates those shards that can't be released. And good fat, raw fat, it then cleanses those arteries, Indeed. cleanses and feeds. I mean, the intestines, everything. The it, it's, it's so incredibly good. But understanding that all the that's why. It's like, it's not just fat. Right. When you come keto or something or whatever that is, it's not, a, it's about how, you know, the kind of food you're eating. It's about yeah. the choices you're making. So yeah. it's so important. Let me blow your mind with one of the biggest foods, biggest on the planet, especially in the United States, uh, pasteurized milk, number three commodity on the New York Stock, Stock Exchange, right? Got milk, got milk. What it should say is got pus, got blood, got shit, got piss because that's what's in it. They don't care. They don't take care of their cows. They inject them with hormones, do all this stuff. That stuff turns gray after they boil it and they put some stuff in it and shake it up and say, drink it. All the amino acids, all the fat, all the protein, dead, 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 dead. The bacteria that's, you're, that's designed to you're allowed, digest. You're allowed, you're allowed uh, 500,000 parts per, 50,000 parts per million of this shitty bacteria in the milk. Raw milk, you're allowed 50, 50. You got to take care of the cows. You got to take care of yourself. Everybody's got to be sanitized and clean. Raw milk, far superior to pasteurized milk. You ready for this? Pasteurized milk, 100% gives you cavities, osteoporosis, and cancer. Not maybe it will, 100%. The sugar in that cooked milk penetrates the enamel in your teeth faster than Coca-Cola. You want to know why you're getting cavities as a kid? Drinking all that pasteurized milk is what's doing it to you. It's insane. I had a conversation with a microbiologist about this. We started the show. I said to him, what's better for you, raw milk or pasteurized milk? Quiet for like 10 seconds. He goes, Bob, raw milk's far superior to pasteurized milk. I go, what? And, and these guys were making a million pounds of cheese a day for craft. I said, why can't you make stuff raw? It's too expensive. And, and, and it's, it's not safe. Where do you get your raw milk from? I said, I get it from the Amish. He goes, oh, they do it right. Why can't you do it right? He said, well, we, we, you know, people in India aren't going to be able to, you know, drink this raw milk. We can't get it to them and all this stuff. And I said, give them cooked condensed milk in a can, give them powdered milk, give people the opportunity to say, I'll spend $8 on a quart of raw milk because I know how good it is. It is the only food on the planet that has the eight essential sugars that your body needs. You can live off of raw milk and not eat anything else. It's that powerful. Vegans, vegetarians sit there and say to me, well, you know, other animal keeps drinking raw milk or colostrum or things when they get to a certain age. I'm like, no other animal bakes bread or makes coffee. But you take a, a, a bowl hey, of raw hey, milk. Hey, and this is a, where we take, take a, a bowl break. of raw you... milk and you put it out for our cats or any other animal. Who's there? Every one of them trying yeah, to get it. Do you have to say, you know, I was vegan for 20 years. So I, um, I've watched, we have a cat who's old and has some issues. We started giving her raw milk and it turned her around. She's like so much healthier and they love, you know, like animals love it. They, of course they love it. it, it raw. It's powerful. You know, it, it, is, it, powerful. it is powerful. It is pretty, so, so, hey guys, we're going to take a quick end, break. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back and we'll be back in just two minutes. We're going to take a real quick break because we, okay. we want to get back to talking about the milk. And also I want you to share with our audience what you've taught me about 
the teeth and the mouth. And I know you've got, you've got, listen, listen, audience, folks, we could be here until the end of time because Bobby's got so much information. Yeah, we're going to have to take a month. We're going to have to do parts two, three, four, five. Yeah, but they're taking a break. Yeah, go. Quiet. Yeah, go. Don't get me going. We'll be, we had a Lenny Bruce moment. We'll be back with the education here in a few more minutes. We'll see you in two. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to Outcomes of Some podcast with Melissa Yamaguchi and my life partner, Bobby Williams, who is full of information that we're all like panting. We can't keep up. Well, I, I wanted to end the raw milk with this. Louis Pasteur, pasteurization before he passed. Pasteurizing is a mistake. Don't do it. This is what he said before he passed. The only reason they did it is because back then they didn't have freezers and you know refrigerators they were doing ice box it was in, it was so yeah. hard on hot days to keep that stuff fresh well yeah. the other thing about the raw milk it has intelligence the bacteria in the raw milk oh my god what does it do it turns into kefir when it starts to sour you can make sour cream kefir yogurt that's what it does you take raw milk and you add a, a little starter to it and you take the milk and put it in a dark place in the cabinet and it starts to make kefir you know, what happens to pasteurized milk? You, everybody knows you take an old old pasteurized milk out that's bad, your head goes back. You're like, oh my God, it turns into poison. So, so you know, man's become this innovative capitalist where he thinks he's smarter than nature, which is impossible. It's an oxymoron. We are inherently nature. How can we be smarter than ourselves? We need to pay attention to nature and what's out there. The sun, all of these things that Meryl and I love, this is the seven doctors, we just want to give everybody life one-on-one so they can all be self-healing, self-sufficient, self-sustaining. They just need the right environment and right information. I want you to lift the seven doctors because you're so good at it. It always sounds nice out of your mouth. Dr. Sun, Dr. Air, Dr. Water, Dr. Earth, Dr. Nutrition, Dr. Exercise, and Dr. Rest. You notice how I put Dr. Rest on the seventh day. This is for all my Catholic friends and my my uh, my Christian friends who love that Sabbath and they take that, that day off, which is fantastic. When I grew up, I, I think you said the same thing, Melissa. Everything's closed on Sunday, you know? Yes. It's like, go to church, come home. Maybe the bakery's open in the morning, and then everybody kicks back, and, and, you know, they all enjoy one another and take the day off. I mean, we've gotten to a point where we don't do that. It's one of the things that Meryl and I love about Europe. It's like, you know, they work until 12, we have this lunch, and then all of a sudden you got a couple hour nap and do whatever you want and go back to work at four, you know? You, it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of profound. We're overworked here. You know, humans aren't made to work 60, 80, 90 hour weeks. It's not supposed to happen, you know, to get to the goal of I retire. I'm going to retire at 65. And then I have 10 years to drive a motorhome across the country and I pass. I don't know who, <laughs> I don't know who made these things up, but they're not going to happen. Oh so Meryl and I are trying to take father time into the later rounds. I say 210 is normal, 10 times your mature age. All the other animals get there to that, right? They get 10 times their age. They don't live as long as us, although the... The turtles got it out over all of us. I mean, I think they get 500 years or something. I think if I start to look like a turtle, I'm giving up. <laughs> that's what that's when I'm going to be living in the shell. You'll just see my. You and me both. Yeah. We're on we're on the rock. We're on the board. I'll be doing the turtle sign know. language because you won't see my face. Going. We're definitely at the precipice of of, of, of huge things, but what yes. old, what's old is new. So these basic things that Mary and I say, these seven greatest doctors in the world. They're so important. We don't have a sort of life 101, you know, in, in school. It should be, it should start in preschool and work its way all the way through university. It shouldn't be, hey, here are the five food groups. Uh, this is the food pyramid, wear a condom, have a good life. That's not a health class. That's not working for me. It's not, it's not, it's not doing anything. I'm like, what if you, what if you get sick? It Go see the guy in the white smock. He's got a stethoscope and give me some so drugs. It's true though that nobody knows how to do basic lifestyle things. It's like, we're not taught. That's why everybody's so confused about what to eat. How That's to right. actually, you know, like these are things we've, we've been on the planet for thousands of years and we don't know how to eat. Right. Like well, it's crazy, we, it's, but it's, it's so like many. Bobby said. Go ahead. You know, what happens is um, we, we listen to the authorities and yeah. the information that were provided. And all of us were raised to believe that those in the position of power had the answers. 
and this authority, you know, we're, we, 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 we lean to authority for knowledge. And so when author the authorities are coming down with information and it starts to be conflicting, people really, the, the layman who's just getting up and going to work to provide for his or her family has no idea, where do I look? Where do I turn? That's why, you're the, you're, you know, I was always the impression that I was the authority. And even with the authorities, I was like that. When the police pull me over and give me a ticket, nah, you shouldn't be giving me a ticket. I was doing the right thing. You just didn't see it the right way. Well, <laughs> I've been in the car with you, so every, I might Everybody to... needs to be their own, their own doctor to a point. Emergency medical care in this country is amazing. Absolutely amazing. There's some amazing, amazing scientific things that are going on. Fantastic. But preventative zero okay and, and we're and, not and, taught preventative uh, and, and preventative is everything we all need to have preventative face it let's face it. we get some people some water get them to jujitsu class get them the good food everybody's good to go exactly i, f I have a real strong sense because we're winding down on time that this is going to be um an episodic series and this I think is so. episode one of our series with bobby williams because Bobby, and I'm get, I'll get you a list next time. You've got so much information that it just spills out of you. You're what, and for our audience, um, I've had the pleasure of having Bobby and Meryl in my life for or over five years now, and this is nothing new. Bobby is a walking, talking, encyclopedic knowledge of information. And earlier when I said he knows everything about everything and I saw you look at Meryl, I wasn't saying that to be funny. You know so much about so much, it's overwhelming. So we've got to have you back. You shared so much information already. I know I, if you, our audience, are watching this on YouTube or any of the shows, please post in some questions. We'll go back and make sure that we can get those questions over to Bobby for the next time we're coming around. Yeah, we get, to, we get super focused in each subject. Now, you guys, I just won this today. I was in meetings for four hours before I walked in the door, ate a few things, and sat down. So, so um, I, you know, M Melissa's really great at wrangling us and, and helping us, like, organize and getting this stuff you know out there properly but yeah the more questions the better um you know we love this space we think that everybody's supposed to be a lot healthier and not have to go through the pain and suffering of disease and old age and you know i don't know if mariel's ever mentioned on the the show but we're working on a a, a big company and a chamber that helps do some of the things that we're talking about that i want everybody on the planet to be able to get in so that they don't have to go through the pain and suffering of old age and disease and you know, and, and it's possible it's here. It's like, you know, I think COVID was actually a catalyst for people paying attention to their own health. Many people, some people still went back and said, you know, the doctors are going to help us. But most people are saying, you know what? I, Maybe I, it's time for me, me to, to be a little more healthy, which is yeah. fantastic. You know, I, 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 I think that the healthier we are, the less things, these things apply to us, you know, and, and, and that's in every area. You're a good man, Charlie Brown. And I know that Meryl and I were excited to have you on. Meryl was, Mary, it was Meryl's suggestion. She deserves the credit. Um, I seconded it very quickly after. It was very fast in a party of two for me to second it. That closed it. And so, but we thank you for being here with us. You're, you're just, you're a breath of fresh air with your knowledge. And we appreciate you so much. And we'll do it again very soon. And next yeah, I'm time around. we'll have a banana on I, camera. I, I live with this person. <laughs> Well, next time you're not going to have a banana on camera, mister. You know, as much food as I can get me. I'm going to push a little bit. I'm going to push the Marielle Hemingway Foundation.org if you want to donate to us because we're trying to create a uh, resource navigator online. That's one thing. And also, I want you to, Melissa, tell us about your energy work because you've got a, an amazing app that gives wonderful energy tips every day. Yeah. And honestly, Bobby and I live by them. And, we and, and, love uh, our energy tips that we get every morning. And that's just not, it's not a plug. You're not paying me. And some of them, and some of them, so. some of them, some days I'm, at the end of the day, I read Mariel what it was and that's exactly how the day went <laughs> yeah it was like a, you know a, a, on a day that i'm supposed to attack things i get 25 things done and sometimes i don't look at them and i and i do that and i look back at it and i'm like wow but 90 percent of the time i look at them in the morning and when, when it says that I'm, my energy is low you put something really great in context that's there it, it says it's, it's either low it's high it's high low it's low high um I, in the beginning, I used to think, I, I don't have low energy. I'm, I'm ready to go. What are they talking about? You know, but it, it, it's all this really small stuff that you have to shift and, and not try to do this or try to do that. 
you know, just focus on, on, on something like paying attention to organizing that day or paying attention to yourself that day. Give yourself time. Don't try to go out there and change this. It's really cool. It's the smallest little shift. You go, oh, yeah, I'm not going to do this today. I, I, I was going to go, you know, I was going to go do this, but I'm not. I'm, today, I'm just going to work on me or I'm going to so stay home. Tell it's very cool. What that is. How does it's it's a my out? energy. It's, it's, well, it's own your energy um, app.com. And if, the, if, if the audience goes on there and plugs in their birthday, then they have the option of finding out what year they are, then they can sign up for the reads. And what Bobby is talking about, Bobby and Merrill are referring to is a every single day, 365 days out of the year, to your cell phone um, at 3.03 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, you get an indicator of how you personally are vibrating in relation to the energy that's emanating from our planet. And so the energy goes into 12 day cycles and it moves and shifts and each one of us is affected by it differently. That's why sometimes you're in a great mood and some of your family members may be in a bad mood and you wonder what's going on. We all woke up in the same house. How can you be in a bad mood? And it's, it's so we start saying, oh, did you not get enough sleep? Did you not do this? It's, it's because the way their body's responding. But once you, once you know what it is, then it's kind of like, I always say to my audience, it's like I'm in a helicopter going over the 405 and I've got you on the phone going, hey, Bobby, hey, Mariel, get off on Sepulveda. There's a wreck ahead. I'm just giving you right. a, a jump start on how to, how to circumvent and, and own your day. So it's 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 on your energy and it's it's a it's a, a daily text that you get at three in the morning. It's a, it's it's a it's a game changer for our lives. So thank you for that. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in this week. Uh, Bobby, you're this is just the first of many because you got too much information, I'd say. You're oh, not going there. anywhere, mister. Yeah, no, that, 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 last thing, last thing. No, we'll be doing podcasts uh, out of my space with Meryl. We have a new space that Meryl, Melissa, yes. and a team of us are working out of. Uh, there's a soundproof room, so we're not going to get the guy with the mop in the back, but, you know, <laughs> we can always have him come in and make the ladies mop, and, and then we also, you know, the animals won't be there, but maybe they will. Anyway. It was the Carol Burnett show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's hilarious. Well, I'm so glad we had this time together. Yeah. yeah, we'll have some pretty big people on there. You know, we're, we're I mean, the biggest. Okay. Calm Let's down. talk some more. Slater, what do you want to talk Calm about? Down. Calm down, Bob. <laughs> Thank you. Was he on yeah. I think he was. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today on Out Comes the Sun. Uh, you can listen to our podcast on Spotify, on Apple, and on YouTube. And you can donate to the Mariel Hemingway Foundation at the Mariel Hemingway Foundation.org. And I want to spell Hemingway for you H E M I N G W A Y dot org. I only say that because a lot of people put two M's and that just won't work. Um, also, on if you're watching on YouTube, you can go to the donate button at the bottom and it will take you right to a link with a QR code. And uh, if you go to MarielHemingway.org, you can also press the donate button and be able to donate to the foundation, which is designed to help guide people towards finding the right solutions for their mental health issues. Um, that is my goal. I'm just trying to raise money so I can come up with an app and a website that has all the information you could possibly want to know about mental health and where to go. But we are in the process of making that happen. And your donation means so much to us. So thank you so much. And we'll see you next week.